Just two little details in today's gospel uh, struck me there earlier as I was reading through it. Uh, firstly, the gospel begins and ends with more or less the same expression, to look hard at someone. So John looks hard at Jesus, and then a little later on, uh, Jesus looks hard at, at Peter. It's an interesting kind of expression because we don't, we don't really say that in English. He was looking hard at me. We're looking intently, staring maybe. Uh, well, the staring sounds a bit negative connotation. Definitely a negative connotation there. But he, he was, so he looks, he looks deep. He looks into kind of the depths of you. You know, it's not just a kind of a, it's not a kind of a checking you out kind of a look. It's not a you know, uh, an, an intimidating kind of a, a stare. But it's, it's. I would imagine, when see when the Lord sees us, what does He see? He sees so much more than just the exterior. So when He looks at you. He's able to see through the mess and the masks and the fears and, and everything. And he can just see you, the real you, just as you are. So when the Lord stares or when the Lord looks, when the Lord looks hard at you, he cuts right to the, the core of who you are. And that's a, a, an interesting and somewhat maybe, maybe kind of intimidating reality. That maybe we don't want to be seen that way. Maybe we want, we want to be seen the way that we present ourselves, the way that, that, that uh, with, with the masks that we're used to, to wearing and to presenting. And then this kind of reality can be a bit messy. Uh, it's maybe not what we, what we want the Lord to see. But the Lord sees the truth. After the Lord responds to those two disciples of John, uh, what do you want? They say, where do you live? He says, come and see. And there's an interesting little detail here. So they went and they saw where he lived and stayed with him the rest of the day. It was about the 10th hour. Why is St. John telling us what time it was? And an apparently kind of insignificant detail. It was the 10th hour. So what? By the way, um, uh, a Jewish day begins and ends with the sunrise. So, so the... The day begins with sunrise, so we'd say 6 a.m. more or less. The day will end then at about 6 p.m. Well, the, the night the night begins at 6 p.m. until the following morning. So it's uh, day and night, like for us, is broken into two 12-hour periods. Just they start. They don't start at midnight and midday. They start at sun up and sun down. So the 10th hour then is about four o'clock in the afternoon. Four o'clock in the afternoon. So why, why is that important? Uh, I think, if you look at the context here, where do you live? Come and see. So they stayed with him the rest of the day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. I think for me that that detail, it kind of points out how it may be a little late in the day when we discover the Lord. It may be a little late in the day when we discover how to pray. Maybe a little late in the day when we discover that our relationship with the Lord wasn't actually a relationship so much as a, an external observance of, of, of rules. Don't get me wrong, obey the rules, they're good, uh, but it's not, that's not a good way to summarize our faith. We obey the rules. No, it should be a, a relationship. And it may be very late in the day when we discover this, but then what, what, what do the disciples do? They stay with them. So it's late in the day but they stay with him. Uh, when I worked in a parish, which shall remain nameless, uh, I would have re recognized that uh, my preaching style wasn't actually <laughs> that popular <laughs> because I think I would talk about things like, you know, deepening our prayer life and deepening our, our love of the Eucharist and, and deepening our relationship with the Lord. And for a lot of people, that was a bit uncomfortable because we were just happy to, to observe the, 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 the rites and go to Mass and do the things externally, okay, but not actually have much heart in it. But that was, that was sufficient for, for, for a lot of people. And my way of speaking was uncomfortable because we speak about taking something that you have, the gift of faith, your, your religion, if you will, and, and, and deepening it going deeper, letting it actually affect our lives and the way we vote and the way we 
spend the weekend and the TV programs that we watch. The faith is supposed to affect all of these aspects of our lives. And it may be late in the day when we discover the transforming power of Jesus. Maybe late in the day when we discover what his call really means for us. And I'm always consoled by saints like St. Teresa of Avila, who quite late in the day, uh, she rediscovered her vocation. She was already a, a Carmelite, but then in her early 40s, about 43, she rediscovers her call and her call to sanctity. And she recognizes the laxity with which she had lived her religious life. And then converts, changes completely her way of life and then brings about renewal within the Carmelite order as well. Uh, Mother Teresa talks about not so much a conversion, but a call within a call. She's a uh, Loretto sister, wasn't it? And uh, then got the call then to, to uh, start a, a new community. So it can be late in the day when, when these things happen. It can be late in the day when we discover the Lord or when we hear his call in, in a new way. But the gospel today teaches us that, that even though it may happen late, stay with him. Stay with him for the rest of the day. Stay with him for the rest of your life. Stay in his house. Stay with the Lord who calls you. Stay with the Lord who stares at you, looks at you, desires you, knows your heart. Stay with him. And even if we've been doing, praying things uh, in, in a certain way for years, or going to Mass in a certain way for years, in this new year, it's just a, a wonderful opportunity to deepen our faith, to deepen our relationship with Jesus. So we ask the good Lord today, in this evening Mass, when it's dark and cold outside, Lord, that we will stay with you, that we will remain with you, now and always. Amen.